Hi, my name is Steve Jones. Um, I lived with a respiratory disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF, for about eight years before, as I was getting close to end of life care, I very fortunately had a lung transplant six years ago, and I'm, I'm doing fine now. To be diagnosed with IPF is absolutely devastating. You're told you have this disease you've never heard of before. You're told you have three to five years to live. Um, and as you go to the internet and, or whoever you go to for advice to learn about the disease, you realize that you're on a downward track, that you're going to get more and more breathless over time. And ultimately you're going to die from, from respiratory failure. It's a very, very scary proposition. Initially, you notice it because you find you know, walking up hills difficult. Um, then over time, sort of even walking up the stairs in your house or, or at a railway station, you, know, you can't do it without stopping two or three times on the way up the stairs. Slowly, it becomes difficult even to walk on the flat. Um, eventually, you become dependent on supplementary oxygen um, to, for exercise initially and then 24-7 at home just to, to stay alive. And you effectively become disabled in your own house. You have need care and you need to have somebody help you with simple tasks like washing and dressing. Um, it's just, it's absolutely horrible. Um, and eventually those friends of mine I've sadly seen pass away, go through end of life care. Um, it's a disease which it's hard to describe. It's, it affects not just you, it affects your whole family. Um, my wife was with me throughout and gave me incredible support, but it's not just her, our children, our extended fr friends, everybody was lives were tin tinged by the illness that I was going through. I'm sure it's true for other chronic diseases, but you know, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis with a prognosis of three to five years is actually worse than most common cancers. Before being diagnosed, I was a keen walker. I wouldn't say I was an active hiker, but I did enjoy walking, you know, walking in the hills. And I found very soon after diagnosis, I could no longer do that. I stayed as active as I could, still walking you know, around the village where I live. But I found what I could do was ride an electric bike. So I, hired, I bought an electric bike, and now I, I'm still a very keen electric biker now, 10 years later. Um, but I would go out on that, and when I found I was getting too breathless, when you're walking and you get too breathless, you just have to sit still, stand still, try and get your breath back. But when you're on a bike, you can continue cycling, let the battery take the strain, um, and you know, it's a great way to get exercise. And it really opens up your chest as well, so your chest muscles and breathing are helped. My mental health wasn't badly affected by the disease. But for many people, that's not the case. I have lots of friends who, whose mental health has suffered enormously because of the uncertainty of the disease, the worry, the worry about your, the pressure you're putting on your family, the worry about how your family will exist when you're not there. There are so many things that go through an IPF patient's mind. Um, and I think we just need to be much better than we are at providing help, uh, mental health support to, to patients.